In our last lesson, we looked at variation within a species, and we had this as an example. These were horses, and we noticed that these showed us a sp particular phenotype. And remember, the definition of a phenotype is any physical or physiological characteristic that an organism possesses. And so these phenotypes are dictated, as you know, by the DNA. And so we looked at all the inheritance patterns in order to get all the different phenotypes in a particular species. Today we want to figure out is how do these phenotypes exist? What's the source for the variation? So I'm going to run through a number of slides to see if we can figure out what the source of phenotypic variation is for a species. So here's a slide showing you Labrador Retrievers. And the Labrador Retrievers here come in a number of different colors. We have the father here who is a chocolate color. Uh, the mother is black and the offspring here, the puppies, uh, we have the black color, the chocolate color, and then also this yellow colored Labrador Retriever. Now the color is dictated once again by DNA. So this slide is a slide of the Indian summer corn. It's actually a really, really good corn. It's pretty sweet. Um, but what we look at here with these ears of corn, each kernel is a different color. So you see a lot of variety here. And each kernel of corn actually has its own set of DNA. They're almost like brother and sister. They're just siblings on an ear of corn. And once again, the different colors are dictated by the DNA themselves. Here's a slide showing you a family of seven. And no, this is not my family. But we do notice here the parents. Here's the father and the mother. And here are the five offspring. And we do notice some similarities to the mother and the father, and also some differences between these siblings as well. This was taken in 1939 during the Great Depression. Hopefully we've figured out what the source of all that variation was, the source of that phenotypic variation. It was in fact sexual reproduction, something we've talked about before. This slide summarizes sexual reproduction for us. We see here the female and the male, and these two bars are representing the homologous pairs of chromosomes. So we recognize that we're gonna have duplication, alignment, and separation. This is called meiosis, and we're leading them to egg cells for the female, sperm cells for the male. They also show us the crossing over events as well. So I have four different sperm and four different eggs, and then this combination, this reproduction, sexual reproduction then, gives us a possibility of 16 different offspring. Without sexual reproduction and genetic variation, then all the offspring would look exactly like the parents. We would get no variation. And variation, we'll find out in a few days, is extremely important in terms of evolution. This slide shows us a couple of cows, and yes, they are cows. On the left-hand side, we have a milk-producing cow. We call it a Holstein. And on the right-hand side is a beef-producing cow, and this one called is called a Belgian Blue. So the Holstein is really, really good at producing milk, and the Belgian Blue is really, really good at producing muscle. Now, there's a change in the DNA that in the Belgian Blue allowed for a double muscle fiber. So this double muscle fiber exists now in this Belgian blue, and it can pass this trait of producing big muscles down to its offspring. We're looking here at two cats. On the left-hand side, we have your typical cat. And on the right-hand side, this cat actually walked up to a San Diego home back in 1981. Now, the ears on this one have not been cut at all, but what happens is when you touch this cat's ears, they curl back. And so we have the name then American Curl just for that reason. And this situation has now been bred into a full-fledged breed of cat that they call the American Curl. Once again, this change in the DNA can be passed down to the offspring. Obviously, that's why we have a whole breed of cat that you can go down to the store and buy if you really like this trait. The flowers we're looking at here, three of them are an odd color. We call these sports, so the sport color here, here, and here. These sport colors actually came from these two normal colored flowers. What was done was the seeds of these normal flowers were exposed to radiation, 
and with that radiation then a change in the DNA occurred and we have now the sport colors. Now these sport colored flowers then can produce offspring and they too will possess the same phenotypic trait that we see in these parent flowers. The second source of variation, hopefully you figured out, we call mutations. Now any change in the DNA is in fact a mutation. So here we have a normal colored flower here and the sex cell DNA, here's our DNA here. If we expose this DNA to some environmental factors, so these environmental factors may in fact change the DNA. And we can actually call it a damaged DNA. But we have these factors and these factors are actually known as mutagens. Mutagens then will cause a change in the DNA, a mutation will occur. Mutagens can be chemical, they can be high temperatures, or they can be radiation, exposure to radiation. So any one of these three things can be a mutagen, which then once again just changes the DNA. We could have a change in the DNA just by having replication errors. So DNA copy errors will occur as well, and it will change the DNA just as the mutagens will change the DNA. Once the DNA has been changed, this may then be reflected in the phenotype of the offspring. So here we see the seed with a changed DNA compared to the sex cell DNA from the parents. This seed then is giving rise to a new phenotype not found in the parents. If the DNA of a sex cell is altered or changed, that new phenotype can be passed on to the offspring. If the DNA of a body cell is changed, then that will not be passed on to the offspring. That could lead to cancer, but it definitely will not be passed on to the offspring.